Welcome to Channel X TV. I'm delighted to be joined by Dex today from Channel Engine um, to discuss a new collaborative white paper that the two of us have done together, um, Diversity to Thrive in Troubled Times. So welcome, Dex. How are you? Thank you, Chris. Lovely to be here and to talk about such a dynamic topic in uh, in these times. So all good? Yeah, so I don't think it's any secret that all the action nowadays is happening on marketplaces. Um, but before we get into the specific marketplaces that people can discover in the white paper, um, why is diversification getting more important than ever? And I know we've had a lot of things going on in recent years from COVID to wars in Europe and the Middle East now. Um, the, the economies around the world are struggling. But th surely that's a time for sort of doubling down on the platforms you're already on rather than going for huge diversification and investment. Or am I wrong there? Yeah, I mean, of course, it, it's always nice to see, you know, if, if things are working well, you know, never change that winning team. Uh, but at the same time, we do see that there's a lot of opportunity um, to find consumers where they actually want to shop. And this is a big change, I think, that's been happening and why the diversification is so important. Um, because, frankly speaking, not all consumers eh, are the same on the same platforms. So some are shopping on, uh, you know, Amazon, eBay, you know, all the, uh, the very well-known platforms. Um, but there's a lot of consumers who are looking into, um, you know, uh, niche products and marketplaces. And therefore, they're just the different profiles um, that are there on the different platforms. So really seeking for, for that kind of, uh, you know, presence when, when the uh, customers are looking for your brand. Um, at the same time, of course, there's a lot of different things that um, diversification in terms of uh, advantages bring, whether it's, um, you know, protecting against, um, you know, pricing challenges or working in the right way with the stock management and product listings. Um, so even if for some products things become more complex, that you would still have a good opportunity to sell them on, on different platforms, for instance. Yeah, and I think that's very true. There are some notable luxury platforms that have traditionally relatively high price point goods where it, it's a lot easier to maintain margins than perhaps some other platforms where there's a, a, a lot more competition. Um, so let, let, let's dive in. Which, which of the marketplaces in the white paper um, do, do you see that retailers and brands can really maintain the, the, their margins and, 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 uh, when, when they're selling on the platform. Yeah, yeah, of course, it, it, it has a, a bit of different implications, whether you're selling in the, uh, you know, a home decor uh, category or you're selling more, you know, in a sports or in a fashion, uh, a fashion vertical. Uh, but we do see that, for instance, in uh, France, um, Colisee is making huge leaps in terms of, uh, you know, presenting sporting goods. They have a very particular um, uh, consumer set there, um, but they're 100% dedicated to those sporting goods and equipment. And therefore, you know, everyone who's looking for you know, cycling or, or particular running equipment, um, yeah, they know how to find that marketplace there. So it's incredibly uh, interesting to see um, that not only um, in terms of returns, that is a very big benefit because people are looking for a particular product and they find exactly what they're looking for. Uh, but also, um, yeah, it's a, a big opportunity for a brand to showcase themselves on the digital shelf where the other brands that are very well known for these consumers are, actually are already. And I guess there's a lot less competition for sporting goods there compared to maybe an eBay or Amazon. But what's the real opportunity with Colise? Uh, how many sports do they cover? How many sellers do they have? How many, how many products are on the marketplace? How, how big are they? Yeah, so I think in total, there are maybe 150,000 products that they've listed currently. So just to give that kind of a, a perspective on, on how many products you would see on an Amazon, for instance. Um, currently, there are 27 different uh, sports that, uh, yeah, in terms of, goods and equipment that they that they currently have uh, have split the marketplace in but just to put it in perspective there are 200 sellers currently on the Colise platform it's also not one where anyone can just launch their products on but the right brand is definitely uh, definitely capable of getting uh, yeah one of those well sought after uh, yeah places on the digital shelf 
Yeah, so if you're a bicycle manufacturer, or you, you 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 produce running running gear, or yeah. e e e e even fitness watches and that that you could time yourself running, then it's a, it's a platform that it it really sets itself apart and has enthusiasts on. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and I think that you know we'll see this with um, this particular product group in in France, uh, but of course, like you said, luxury platforms like Twenty Four S, for instance, on the fashion category also do uh, do a lot in in this regard. Um, you know, Twenty Four S is officially owned by uh, the Louis Vuitton Moët Hennessy Group, so uh, that's uh, like quite good prestigious time. then. <laughs> So that's also one of those uh, marketplaces where, as a brand, you just want to be seen if uh, if you're attracting that audience. Mm. So Louis Vuitton, a massively well-known brand and, and very protective of, of, of their brand image. How open are they to having third party sellers on the marketplace? And obviously they're open because they're a marketplace. But what I mean is, uh, are there particular criteria that they want from brands? Um, how luxury do you have to be to sell on there? Yeah, yeah, and I think it's a very good question. It's a bit more of a curated platform, so it's not that you can just, you know, uh, uh, request an account and start selling immediately. Um, but we actually do see that, um, you know, we can help with uh, setting up the right uh, kind of brand image and also, you know, a brand book where you would have the different kind of uh, uh, assets of uh, of the collections that the brand's offering, uh, which help a lot in getting getting launched on that platform. But definitely, at looking at the fashion and beauty brand brands um, yeah, that are, are in the high end towards luxury segments. Um, there's a lot of, of course, prestigious luxury houses that are already present <clears throat> there, um, but also mostly because there's a lot of brands from that LVMH group that are already represented on the platform. So that's two very different French um, marketplaces, one for sporting goods, one for, for luxury. Yeah. The other big market in Europe, though, the massive market, is, is obviously Germany. Which marketplaces are really making moves in Germany at the moment? Um, and I should actually say, um, since we published the white paper, we've had a couple of comments on LinkedIn <laughs> where people have said, hey, you missed out eBay. You missed out Amazon. What, what, what's going on, guys? Um, and I, I think I know the answer, which is pretty much that everyone's already on those marketplaces and we wanted to highlight country specific and niche specific. Um, but do you, do you want to just touch on eBay and Amazon and then maybe highlight a, a, a German marketplace that people are perhaps not quite so familiar with? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, what we do see with uh, with eBay and Amazon is that they're great marketplaces to sell on, uh, but also because they're more generic marketplaces and they're roughly open for everyone, um, that would also uh, imply that they're uh, a bit more competitive in terms of space, right? So we're looking mm -hmm. at that diversification in the sense to make sure that um, once you feel that you know, you've settled in in the right category on Amazon uh, and then you're looking in, well, into where do I want to expand towards? Where where do I want to actually uh, find new buyers, more customers? Um, and then that's when you get into the different marketplaces that we've uh, we've listed some more. Um, and in total uh, uh, honesty, I think that um, Amazon in Germany has a, a bit of a, a tough cookie with uh, with Kaufland. Uh, they're doing very well, very um, uh, customer friendly, but also for sellers, it's a, it's a nice platform to sell on. Um, mm -hmm. So that's good to note. Plus, um, I've been to a couple of, uh, of the Kaufland presentations and we've been very mm -hmm. uh, closely speaking with the guys. Um, they've developed a lot of different features for sellers specifically to actually move towards uh, um, the Kaufland platform mm -hmm. more successfully. So that's so uh, incredible. Kaufland? Nice. They're actually relatively new as a marketplace, aren't they, in the grand scheme of things? Um, yeah, yeah. In, in, in total, they're a bit newer, but also, of course, uh, um, because they came from uh, a retail uh, company and then moved into that, uh, that online marketplace. Um, so that's uh, maybe a, a bit of a different, uh, different kind of a setup for that time. Currently, we see it everywhere. Outland <laughs> <laughs> was, of course, one of those that, uh, that actually started on that, uh, yeah, quite early on, if I may say so. And to give people a favor, Kaufland, 
what sort of product ranges do they carry? Because I, I believe it's a bit broader than the, the, the two French marketplaces we've discussed, 24S. And the... Yeah, yeah. To be honest, um, so on Kaufland, you would have a, a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, mass merchants kind of, uh, of categories. Um, there's a lot of them in terms of uh, electronics, home and garden, um, you know, uh, uh, baby and, and maybe even kitchen uh, uh, equipment, yes, domestic appliances and stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of different categories there, uh, but the most larger categories you can actually uh, can actually find. Uh, so it's also more of, um, yeah, uh, more of a holistic marketplace, if, if I may say so, than the ones that uh, just mentioned that are very specific. Um, what is good to know is that according to our onboarding teams, um, you know, Kaufland is one of the easiest platforms to actually onboard. Um, they don't have incredibly difficult requirements when it comes to content. Um, and everything in terms of the order flows is quite straightforward. Um, so for us, it's always a, a nice one to recommend if you want to expand in Germany. So that, that's, a, that's a great one for Germany then. Um, and, and the other countries we, we, we've got in the, 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 the white paper, um, the, the Netherlands, Turkey, the USA, the UK, Do you wanna, is there a real standout marketplace, another favourite? And, and what's your reason? Is it another one that's easy for onboarding or is it really high sales in a particular niche? Um, well, g give us one other real standout marketplace. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for uh, uh, for me, what really stands out uh, these days are the the Turkish marketplaces. Um, Trendjol has been making great moves. Um, they've been working towards uh, also getting a, a foot on, a, on the ground in Europe. Uh, but the Turkish marketplace Trendjol is on its own, um, yeah, just known as the um, a marketplace in the, in Turkey. Um, I think, if if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they do uh, one and a half million packages every day. Uh, so that's an incredible number. Um, and a ni nice insights that we see that also in, in this marketplace, um, where you would, might think it would be fashion oriented, um, small domestic appliances work incredibly well. We've never seen more air fryer sales than we've seen in, uh, in Trenchel and Turkey. <laughs> so I, I've, I've got to ask the question, um, but for UK sellers, it's often, OK, France and Germany are the big countries. And for German sellers, it's like, OK, France, but we want to be selling to the UK. Turkey seems like one of those countries that isn't at the top of everyone's kind of instant hit list for expansion. What are the challenges with selling in, into Turkey, even on a marketplace? And obviously at Channel Engine, you've got experience from helping retailers what can a, a platform like Channel Engine do to kind of smooth the journey to selling? Because language, currency, pretty much everything is going to be alien. And yeah. it's, it's, it's not even necessarily they're using the same alphabet as us for language. So it's a... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely the case. And of course, uh, a couple of these challenges when it comes to currency and languages, you would already encounter moving from the UK to mainland Europe. Um, and where we also see that, uh, that, that these kind of challenges um, are not just limited to how do you present your offer, but also to um, logistics, right? How do you make sure that your items are uh, available in uh, and, and delivered in a time span that the customer would actually expect expect these days uh, but at the same time how do you handle your returns and everything that comes to that um, in any case uh, within channel engine um, we make sure that um, the currency conversion is done in the platform per channel um, that's an incredibly important piece um, we have to update those currencies daily just to make sure that everything is smoothed out but we show you on um, an order level for the financial statements, reconciliation, etc., <laughs> both in your own currency as the converted currency, what the sale, uh, sale price have actually been. Um, at the same time, we help a lot on translating content for particular regions, um, making sure to apply the correct VAT percentages, which is, of course, also uh, sometimes a challenge, uh, and automating the different pieces of the logistics and then the return uh, flows, where um, not in the last place, um, we'd have a very extensive partner network of 
three PLs. So you would have a warehouse on on the ground with the region that you want to expand towards, um, as well as uh, a lot of native integrations towards, for instance, WMSs, right? Whereas management systems and ERP systems, where all these things are already included. So it's more of uh, you know plugging into to the right uh, the right warehouses or making sure that you know you're set up in the right way, uh, and then leave the automation to us. Uh, Dex, I want to thank you for your time today. And for anyone that wants to find out more, I'll put a link below this video to our, our collaborative white paper, um, Diversify to Thrive in the Troubled Times, where you'll find all of the marketplaces we've discussed and a whole ton more marketplaces that we haven't <laughs> had time to speak about today. But Dex, I, I, I'm going to put, put you on the spot and, uh, and tell people now that I'm going to drag you back in a couple of months' time in the new year and we'll talk about some of the other marketplaces that are in the white paper. But also, I've got a bit of a challenge for you. Um, obviously, the white paper is published and that's not going to change now. But next time we speak, I'd like you to come back with one new marketplace that isn't in the white paper that you've seen over the, the Q4 that's had outstanding results and represents a, a, a real positive um, expansion opportunity, whether it be a niche marketplace and it's only for some retailers or it's a more, more more broad marketplace that, that that pretty much anyone could jump on so that's your challenge for the new year bring it on <laughs> and we'll be back <laughs> to speak again then but i want to thank you for your time today and um click the link below this video um jack down in comments and you'll you'll be able to download the white paper um for all of the marketplaces from clearly the, to trend all that we've spoken about today and a whole lot more across the UK, Germany, France, Netherlands, Turkey, the USA, um, where, where they're all detailed there for more opportunities. So thank you for your time, Dex. Thank you, Chris.